For example, suppose that the actual pressure is 1.05 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Suppose the actual pressure is 1.05 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Let's figure out what the gauge pressure would be. Let's try working that out on paper. Or on your calculator, whichever works for you. Minus one. Now let's stop and think about that a little bit more. Let's actually write that into our equation here. So what should I plug in for P? Uh, 1.05 times 10 to the And what would be the units on that? Um, pascals. Because we said those were the units. And then what should I plug in for the atmospheric pressure? Uh, 1.01 times 10 to the Right. Now I think that you were plugging in one atmosphere. Now technically it's correct that the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, but then you can't do the subtraction. You can't subtract atmospheres in Pascal. So since we're working with Pascals here, instead of plugging in one atmosphere, we should plug in 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascal, so we have light units. No, I think you're probably right. Did you get to use a calculator on your test? Oh, no. That would be our gauge pressure. Or to start with, without a calculator, we could just say it's 0.04 times 10 to the fifth. 1.05 minus 1.01 is 0.04. And that gives us more intuition for what we're doing. Remember, the gauge pressure is just the extra pressure that's existing above the normal atmospheric pressure. This shows us that the gauge pressure is just how much extra pressure we have above the normal atmospheric pressure. Why is that called the gauge pressure? Because that's what normal pressure gauges normally measure. Pressure gauges don't bother measuring the atmospheric pressure because that's kind of the starting point. Everyone takes the, the atmospheric pressure for granted. They, if you have a pressure gauge, that's going to tell you how much extra pressure you have above atmospheric pressure. For example, a person might use a pressure gauge to measure the pressure in their tires. Well, the pressure gauge wants to, uh, it would be perfectly normal for your tires to be at atmospheric pressure. I, I, that's something I should mention, in the, actually. Any, fluid that's in contact with the atmosphere is at atmospheric pressure. So as long as the tires are open to the environment, they would be at atmospheric pressure. Once you seal them off, you can get them at higher than atmospheric pressure. And you want to know how much higher than atmospheric pressure. Well, in this case, we have tires that are this much higher than atmospheric pressure, 0.04 times 10 to the fifth. And then that turns out to be 4,000 if you work out the math. So P here stands for the actual, or total pressure. Notice that P would always be bigger than the gauge pressure. Because the gauge pressure is just the additional pressure over atmospheric pressure. Even though we're subtracting the atmospheric pressure here, that doesn't mean we're subtracting the number one, unless we're working in atmospheres. If we're working in Pascals, this is the atmospheric pressure that we would subtract. Let's say we have, say, a unicycle here. And the total mass of the unicycle here is uh, 50 kilograms. And here we have the tire. Let's say that the gauge pressure of the tire Is 4,900 pascals 
figure out the area of the tire. That's in contact with the ground. So we can work through this together. So the first thing to do is to do our, our normal approach and figure out what are the forces on the object here. So what are the forces on this object? Um, weight. The weight and? Uh, normal force. That's right. Well, how would we figure out the weight here? Um, we're, well, 50 times 9.8. That's right. Let's suppose the whole thing together, including the tire, is 50 kilograms. So let's work out the weight. I'm sorry? Uh, 490 kilograms. Now that would be a good unit for mass. Do you remember what the units are for weight? Um, um, 10 to the power. Now remember that the weight is a force. What we're doing here is identifying all the forces on the object. The weight is the force of gravity on the object. Newton. That's right. It's a common mistake to confuse the weight and the mass, but kilograms is for mass and newtons is for weight. Those are actually different things. After all, the mass was in kilograms, so we wouldn't want to say that the weight was in kilograms. Now, what's the normal force then? Um, this, uh, same 490. Yeah, even without working out the equations, we can see the normal force here has to be balancing the weight. So the normal force from the ground is 490 newtons. It's clear here that the normal force must be 490 newtons. The ground is pushing on the tire with 490 newtons of force. Well then, according to Newton's third law, if the ground is pushing on the tire with 490 newtons of force, how much force is the tire pushing on the ground with? The same. Right. So the force of the tire on the ground is, 400, is also 490. So all the forces here in this problem are 490. So in general, we can say we're dealing here with forces of 490 newtons. OK, and now we might actually be ready to actually figure out the answer to the problem here. So what concept is the question asking us for? What would be a good symbol for what the question is asking? Area A. Yeah. Well, given what we know, do we have any equations that we could plug into to find A? Good. We can rearrange this equation over here to say that it's the force over the pressure. Well, what should we plug in for the force? 490. That's right. We know that the force that the tire is exerting on the ground is the same as all these other forces, 490 newtons. And what do you think we should plug in for the pressure? Um, the actual pressure, which is the gauge pressure plus 101.93. All right, that's a good instinct. Actually, I think in this case, all we need is the gauge pressure. But let me think about that for a second. Yeah, I think all we need is the gauge pressure. And here's why. These are the forces that are necessary for the ground to support the unicycle. These are the forces that are necessary for the ground to support the unicycle. Since the unicycle has a weight of 490 newtons, it needs to, the ground needs to push up with a force of 490 newtons on that. We haven't taken into account that, that the ground also has to support the atmosphere. We're not taking that into account because that kind of a, applies to all problems. So we're not taking into account that the ground has to support the atmosphere. So these forces don't take into account the weight of the atmosphere. These forces don't take into account the weight of the atmosphere. They only take into account the 50 kilograms from the unicycle. Well, since this number doesn't take the atmosphere into account, it's appropriate that our pressure number should not take the atmosphere into account. So it's actually appropriate here to just use the gauge pressure. We just want to know the extra pressure in the tire just to support the mass of the unicycle. We want to know the extra pressure in the tire 
to support the mass of the unicycle, we're not worried about the uh, atmospheric pressure that's also supporting the pressure of the atmosphere above that. These numbers here just refer to what it takes to support the unicycle, not counting the atmosphere. So that we should use a pressure that it is just dealing with the unicycle and not the atmosphere. That, that's, that's pretty tricky. But we can just plug in the 4900 here, and then let's figure out what the, what the area is. Good, and what would be the units on that? 